Welcome to My Friends in the North with PR and management consultant Sarah Waddington as she interviews some of the leading lights in the north of England about their work, the economy, communications and what makes them tick. Hi everyone, My Friends in the North is back. As you all know, Friends in the North is a 20-minute podcast series from me, astute.work owner Sarah Waddington, in which I interview some of the region's leading business figures. Well, in light of these unprecedented times as businesses are rushing to mitigate the impact of COVID-19, also known as coronavirus, I've decided to open up the podcast to a kind of takeover. In these next five episodes, I'll be sticking to one theme and I'll be talking to members of the Northeast COVID-19 Economic Response Group about what support is available in the region to help businesses, starting today with Helen Golightly, who is the Chief Executive of the Northeast Local Enterprise Partnership, also known as the LEP. Full disclosure, the Northeast LEP is a client of Astute.Work. So Helen, welcome to the show. Hi, Sarah. Great to have you on. Thank you for making time a, a very busy and challenging time for the lab. Right. I've actually talked about the fact that we're facing unprecedented times. The country's in lockdown as the government enforces measures designed to slow down the rate of coronavirus. Your chief exec of the Northeast LEP, which through the Northeast Growth Hub has been providing support to the business community through a dedicated COVID-19 toolkit and more, Talk to me about the Northeast COVID-19 Economic Response Group, which is separate to this. What is it and who's involved? Yeah, so the COVID-19 um, Economic Response Group in the Northeast um, is a partnership between the Northeast LEP, obviously, which I head up, as, you, as you've said, the business organisations who are represented through the CBI, so Sarah Glendinning um, is part of the group, and also both of the combined authorities within the region. So that's the North East Combined Authority and the North of Tyne Combined Authority. Just a for clarification, it's probably worth just mentioning the area, the geographical area that we cover. So the North East LEP and both of the combined authorities cover um, basically from Scotland down to Teesside, from the coast over to Cumbria. We cover five of the Tyne Weir districts and plus Northumberland and Durham. The, the real reason for the economic response group and us coming together, you can imagine we work very closely together around the economy and the economic wealth and well-being sure. of, of the, the North East in any event. But it's really important that these times that we actually come together and show that collaborative working. We really realise that, that we need to show that economic leadership across the North East so we formed this group, um, and I know we're going to talk a little bit more about what we're actually doing, but I just think it's really important that we seem to be work together and we actually may hopefully make a difference. Absolutely. So you said there's the North East LEP, there's the CBI, the two combined authorities, and with the support of industry, you're collectively working on one plan, which encompasses steps right now and in the future. Can you explain what the long-term goal is and what the steps that you are putting into place right now? I mean, I think you've termed it a five-point plan. That's right. So we have. We've, we've, we've put a five-point plan together. Um, I mean, the long-term goal is very much around we need in the short term to try and mitigate um, as much as we can in terms of the, the impact on the economy in terms of COVID-19, but also not just focus on the short term, but obviously to focus on the longer term in terms of how are we actually going to very quickly recover from the virus and the impact it's having on the economy. As I say, we've produced a five point plan and some of, some of that is focused on the short term, some of it is on the long term, and some of it is about absolutely establishing a dialogue with government and maintaining that sort of, you know, a strong one voice for the North East. So the five point plan, if I, if I just sort of skip through that quickly. That would be great, yeah. Yeah, so, so the first one is um, to support businesses to stay open, remain operational and to not shed jobs. Secondly, to maintain people in employment and economic activity, to mobilise accelerate partners in the region to solve new problems and challenges, but also, as I said, to prepare for the longer term with a plan for recovery in the future and to coordinate the economic voice and influence of the reason to our best effect. So, so that's what we're focusing on and trying to keep it quite simple. So just to, to, oh, yeah. to, to, to jump in there, ultimately, in a very simple terms, then it's about supporting the local economy right now, 
building business resilience and getting the region ready for recovery. And I think I read that the, the plan is to return long term the region to pre-COVID-19 GDP and employment levels, right? That's right. Yeah, we have we have we have to have that aim. We have to continue the journey that we've been having over the past few years in terms of the northeast economy, which has been growing and, and becoming more robust and closing the gap nationally. Fantastic. And we'll come back to that in a little while, if that's OK. So I just wanted to say that um, you kind of alluded to this at the beginning, that it was important to prove that you to show, sorry, that you were working together um, because it happens, but it's not necessarily avert for everybody. It will be reassuring for listeners to hear that you, you're providing this strategic leadership at the time. Why is the collaboration so important? I think it's absolutely essential to speak with one voice for, for lots of reasons. I think firstly, we need to be really have one sort of consistent message for businesses and to have one go to place. There's a lot of obviously there's a lot of messaging coming out of government. We watch the news several times a day and it's really confusing for the biz for businesses and self-employed people to understand where to go and what to get, you know, where to get the information from. So So streamlining really really important in terms of helping put everything collectively in one place for everybody to access uh, absolutely so so it's about how trying to have one one place for everybody to go to it's also about how that we need to obviously work efficiently together so as you can imagine everybody's mobilized incredibly quickly over the last two or three weeks in terms of trying to add support but there's no point everybody trying to do the same thing so it's very much trying to have that coordination and understand you know who's strong in delivering various aspects of that and how we work best to do that. And then I think in terms of the one voice, the really key issue is for us is that how do we coordinate the region's messages to government? So there's a, there's a number of ways that we do that, but it's very much around understanding what's happening out there with businesses and the self-employed, what are the issues that they're facing, and feeding those very, very quickly through the mechanisms we've got up to government who can potentially offer more assistance or clarification in terms of some of the assistance and schemes that they've put out. Well, fingers crossed that collective influence will deliver greater impact. Um, Talk to us a little bit more about the biggest issues that businesses and the self-employed are facing right now. What, where should people go to for, for help and advice? We're advocating that we use the Northeast Growth Hub, which is an online resource, but there's also um, people at the end of a phone that you can telephone and, and have a conversation with who are trying to help. You can find that on www.northeastgrowthhub.co.uk. So we're trying to put all of the information and trying to make that clear to everybody in terms of where to go. So that's really important. Um, but it's also about how do we then engage with, with others through that as well. So keeping businesses open and people in employment is a real key priority for you right now. What support outside the Growth Hub is there in regards to this? I mean, obviously, the government have announced a raft of interventions across the past 10 days. Absolutely. So there's a, there's a, there's a whole host of different sort of schemes. And, and as we know, um, the daily sort of updates from government have announced, particularly in the last week or so, a number of initiatives. So whether that's the, the interruption loan fund, the employee retention scheme, the small business grant scheme, it's quite a confusing landscape out there for businesses and the self-employed. Mm. So what we've tried to do is basically turn that into quite simple messaging and trying to make it clear where people can actually go for help which is great so and obviously i'll signpost to um, the different resources um at the bottom of the show notes as well um we'll be delving into more depth into each of the five point plan on coming episodes but i think people will be interested in the fact that you're looking to businesses to like the business and industry i guess to help solve the challenges facing the northeast right now can you talk a bit more about this? Because this is actually quite an interesting area in terms of um, how people are and, and businesses are responding, but actually um, how it can help bring some interventions that are desperately needed right now. Yes. Yeah, so so, so go- government have put out a number of sort of what we call challenges. And, and ch- challenges are where we'd basically need to solve a problem together. Um, so, go- so government have put out a number of challenges. Again, these that these are listed on on the Northeast Growth Hub um, for information. So, is that listed under call directory at the moment? I can again, I can double check, but I'm pretty sure that yeah, people want to look yeah. for it. It's under the call directory, isn't it? It is. It is. It is. But to, to give you an example of that is around sort of increased production of ventilators, for example. So, there's a call out for um, 
manufacturing companies who can potentially start producing ventilators to start doing so. Um, so it is that type of thing. It's where government really need um everybody's help in terms of solving those problems. So we've seen businesses pivot already, haven't we? So there's been gin distilleries making hand sanitizers. So it's that kind of thing. So businesses, if they can, if you're able to help or you have facilities or goods or um, products that you might be able to put to better use, please keep your eyes peeled, I guess is what we're saying here. Yeah. And that's, I think the, the other thing just to mention is, is there are national challenges, as, as we've highlighted, but there's also um, lots of people actually co- coming to us offering help and we're also trying to do sort of a, a match-up scheme, um, which as you can imagine is quite complicated. But we're trying to do things at the local regional level as well as just the national calls. Fantastic. So Northeast Growth Hope for people who want to know more about that and actually just to be signposted to support generally um, as they're moving through this, this period of turbulence. Just to come back to, we talked about pre-COVID-19 levels of GDP and employment. How will the work of the Northeast COVID-19 Economic Response Group impact the Strategic Economic Plan, which in its simplest form is basically designed to increase the number of jobs in the Northeast by 100,000 by 2024? Yeah, so, so the Strategic Economic Plan is a 10-year plan, as you say, from 2014 to 2024. And the, the, the main... Um, performance that we're geared towards is around creating 100,000 more jobs. Um, we're also focusing on the strategic economy around what we could class as better jobs, so managerial, technical, professional jobs. The latest figures um, pre-COVID-19 were that we were at um, 74,000 jobs created, which is sort of six years in, which is wow. a really positive, positive number to be at. Clearly, you know, we, we've got um, economists within the northeast level trying to understand what's actually happening and potentially um, map out what that the impact of COVID-19 is going to have. I think the key thing with the strategic economic plan is it is a long term plan. We've identified in the past where we need to focus upon in terms of what we think are the key sectors that will best add value to the northeast economy and how we move forward. I think, you know, that's not going to change overnight, but obviously we won't just continue. It won't be business as usual. We need to actually look at what are the scenarios that we need to focus upon? How do we need to change the plan around that? What we've seen, obviously, in the COVID-19 response is that a lot of the um, sectors that we potentially haven't focused upon in the strategic economic plan up to date have have been particularly impacted upon. So if we look at hospitality, for example, or some of the other service industries. So we will need to take a step back and have a look what is the impact on the strategic economic plan. Similarly, we're we're writing a a local industrial strategy. We will need to look at that and look at to see what the impact of the local on the local industrial strategy will be and how we need to focus that in terms of how do we best recover from the position we find ourselves in. Is it going to be a quick bounce back? We don't know that yet, or sure. is it going to be a slower recovery? So we so please be assured that we are you know working through the um the economics of all of this if you like but sure. also thinking ahead as part of the five point plan and the response group around you know how do we you know recover from this this situation quickly had a very similar discussion yesterday helen it's very difficult to to see whether it's going to be like uh, what everybody hopes is more of a martini shape um rather than a soup bowl effect um, which is obviously what we had with the recession 10, 12 years ago. So fingers crossed that it is a, a quicker bounce back this time round. But good to know that obviously you'll be revisiting the strategic and economic plan uh, and, and seeing how that uh, is affected and obviously then t- taking it forward in, in the most appropriate way according to the current situation. One of the things I really like about you, Helen, is that you're always very pragmatic. What makes you optimistic that the North East can withstand the impact of coronavirus? Um. I mean, the first thing I think I want to say on that, Sarah, is that, you know, we all need to be incredibly sensible. At this time, we need to heed government advice and NHS advice. But I think in terms of how do we, you know, recover from this in terms of from the economic point of view, it's very much I think we need to focus on actually as the North East, we've actually got a great collegiate spirit. We've got a hugely strong work ethic. You know, and I'm, I'm absolutely confident that all of the businesses 
will really, really strive to bounce back. They have to. It's their livelihoods as well as the economy. So I, I think, you know, we're, we're always blessed. And if you've heard me talk before, Sarah, about the North East, and I'm really, really passionate about it. But yeah. I think it comes down to the people at the end of the day. The people are absolutely passionate about about the North East. And we, we will really look very resilient. And, I was about you know, to say I'm, the I'm word really, resilience. I yeah, think that's, really, it's in our DNA. Yeah, we're, we're absolutely resilient. And I, I do have a lot of confidence that everybody, when we get the chance, we'll really, really strive to bounce back and get the economy back to where it was. That's great. Um, let's end on an upbeat note. What's made you smile today? <laughs> um, what, what makes me smile today and probably over the last few days is that you know, despite what's going on around us, you know, in, in all of this, the, the incredibly sad news you see, see on the TV is that the offers of help that are flooding in and that's whether it's via the Northeast COVID economic response group or whether you see it, you know, help going into the NHS, that makes me smile because it makes me realise actually, you know, we're a really caring population. Everybody we genuinely wants to, to do their bit to help out. So... That's what makes me smile. That's what keeps you going is when you get an email, you know, when somebody offers help. And we ha I'll give you an example. Yesterday, there, were, there was a hotel in Newcastle who emailed it to say, obviously, they're closed, but they've got a number of bedrooms. And, and, you know, could they become available for NHS workers or other key workers? It's that type of wow. thing that makes me smile. Yeah, that's um, it's when the community comes together for the common good, isn't it? Which is just fantastic. Helen, thank you so much for an insightful interview and for talking to us at a very busy time about the work of the Northeast COVID-19 Economic Response Group. Big thanks also to all the partners within that and to the team at the LEP, who are, I know every single person is working incredibly hard at the moment, flat out to, to do what they can to provide support. And I'd just like to say that that's appreciated. Um, and for listeners, if you'd like to know more, you can follow at Northeast LEP on Twitter. There's also Growth Hub Northeast, North East. I forget to put my teeth back in. Uh, you can visit the Northeast COVID-19 Economic Response Group page on the uh, Northeast Local Enterprise Partnership website. And that's at www.nelep.co.uk. Thank you very much. And until next time. Thank you for listening to My Friends in the North with Sarah Waddington. You can find Sarah on Twitter at Mrs. Underscore Wads or get involved with the podcast by emailing Sarah at astute.work. See you next time. <laughs>